Hello everybody, welcome to DUDR Academy. Today I am discussing some of the questions from the central nervous system. And these questions will be useful for all job aspirants who are preparing for various competitive examinations. So let me move on to the first question. Aphasia causing affected person to be unable to understand or comprehend the language with intact repetition is termed as options Broca's aphasia, global aphasia, conduction aphasia, vernix aphasia. Aphasia causing affected person to be able to understand, to be unable to understand or comprehend the language with intact repetition. So here the correct answer is option D vernix aphasia. So here we should know what is vernix aphasia. Vernix aphasia means this is characterized by impairment in language comprehension. So in vernix aphasia we can see the impairment in language comprehension. In language comprehension. That means there is difficulty in understanding the speech. Difficulty in understanding the speech. Comprehension means understanding the speech. Then so we will discuss each options. Broca's aphasia means yes this is uh, regarding the difficulty in language production okay that there will be uh, there is limited language in Broca's aphasia means we can call it as expressive aphasia okay Broca's aphasia means expressive aphasia that means there the speech output will be reduced speech output is diminished markedly that is known as Broca's aphasia okay Wernick's aphasia means the speech output will be normal but the level of understanding in the understanding there will be impairment or in comprehension so this vernix aphasia is also known as receptive receptive aphasia vernix aphasia is also known as receptive aphasia broca's aphasia is also known as expressive aphasia then what is global aphasia here there will be impairment in both the modalities that is there is impairment in both receptive and expressive language both receptive and expressive language will be affected in global aphasia then what is conduction aphasia it is a rare form of aphasia in which both expression and comprehension are intact so both uh, the receptive part and the expressive uh, problems there will be no uh, problems associated with the expression and in the receptive phase but there will be an isolated impairment in ability to repeat simple phrases there will be some kind of specific abnormality there will be impairment in repeating repeating uh, the simple phrases simple phrases will be affected okay there will be impairment in repeating the simple phrases so these are the different types of aphasia so in our question what is the aphasia in which there will be unable to the person will be having difficulty to understand or comprehend or comprehend that means the answer is vernix aphasia so i think it is clear to uh, everyone now i am going to the next question parkinson's disease is caused by degeneration of neurons in an area of brain called dash that is options are substantia nigra basal ganglia cerebellum corpus callosum so here the correct answer is option a that is substantia nigra so here uh, we are discussing in detail uh, regarding parkinson's disease so first important uh, point that you have to note is that parkinson's disease it is a slowly progressive disorder okay that is a slowly progressing disorder parkinson's disease is a slowly progressive disorder which is mainly affecting the movement that is mainly affecting the movement and also that will be affecting the muscle control and muscle control and balance so there will be problems in movement 
in muscle control and in balance this is a slow uh, slowly progressive disorder okay so what happens here is the cells are destroyed in certain area on certain part of the brain stem okay that cells are known as the substantia nigra so certain either uh, the cells are destroyed in certain part of the brain stem and this cell mass can be called as the substantia nigra so this sub, uh, cell mass or substantia nigra we know this nerves in this part of the substantia nigra is producing a chemical known as dopamine so mainly there will be degeneration of nerves in substantia nigra so the nerve cells in the substantia nigra is producing dopamine so in case of parkinson's disease what happens if there is degeneration the dopamine production will be reduced okay so if there is degeneration that leads to decreased dopamine okay the dopaminergic cell loss can be found in the substantia nigra of midbrain and also another important feature in parkinson's disease is there is presence of levy bodies presence of levy bodies here i am discussing some of the associated uh, points also related with this topic there will be presence of levy bodies so please note levy bodies if the question is asking levy bodies are associated with which condition then we should know it is associated with parkinson's disease okay then we know the first important symptom in parkinson's disease is first important symptom is tremor tremor is the first important symptom then other features are there will be bradykinesia and rigidity okay later only there uh, uh, develops the bradykinesia and rigidity and rigidity and there is postural in, uh, instability which is seen again in the later phase of the disease we can see postural instability and how these are the important symptoms associated with parkinson's disease so we can say parkinson's disease is a disorder of basal ganglia because basal ganglia is consisting of five pairs of nuclei and one among them is substantia nigra so here the correct answer is substantia nigra the parkinson's disease is caused by the degeneration of neurons in an area of brain and that is called the answer is substantia nigra now we move on to the third question spike and wave discharges in eeg record is typical of options delirium alzheimer's disease parkinson's disease epilepsy so here the correct answer is option d epilepsy so here we are discussing eeg eeg is first used eeg was first used by hans berger hans berger in 1924 first used by hans berger in 1924 so here we know there is tracing of the voltage fluctuate fluctuations along with the time recorded from multiple electrodes which are placed over the scalp and eeg waves are uh, alpha beta theta delta gamma waves are there and there are different types of waveforms it can be epileptic waveforms and non epileptic waveforms so the epileptic waveforms include this spike and wave discharge spike and wave pattern is typically an epileptic waveform then there are other non epileptic waveform like uh, there can be slowing in ecg slowing in ecg which can be either diffuse or focal slowing that is another uh, non epileptic pattern of waveform found in ecg so that can be due to the cerebral dysfunction cerebral dysfunction may cause slowing slowing type of uh, waves can be seen in cerebral dysfunction so there are different types of epileptic waveforms uh, rather than this spike and wave discharges there are uh, other different types also and i what i discussed the slowing is a type of non epileptic waveform this is a non epileptic type of waveform and it is associated with cerebral dysfunction okay the spike and wave discharges are seen in this condition 
epilepsy. Then question number four. A female client admitted after a car accident develops signs and symptoms of increased intracranial pressure. The client is intubated and placed on mechanical ventilation to help reduce ICP. To prevent a further rise in ICP caused by suctioning, the nurse anticipates administering which drug endotracheally before suctioning. Options are phenytoin, mantol, lidocaine and furosemide. So here the correct answer is option C, lidocaine. So here the question given is, the female client is admitted after a car accident and develops the signs of increased intracranial pressure. The client is intubated and is uh, placed on mechanical ventilation. So to prevent the further rise in ICP caused by suctioning, so if the, if the if we are doing suctioning there can be chance of increased ICP. So the nurse anticipates the administration of which drug endotracheally before suctioning. So correct answer is lidocaine. Administering lidocaine uh, through this endotracheal tube and through the endotracheal tube if we are administering lidocaine that helps to reduce the elevations in intracranial pressure caused by suctioning. So even though we are administering mannitol and furosemide, these are all administered to reduce the ICP. This also reduces ICP but it is not given endotracheally. Okay, we are given manitol and furosemide to raise the uh, to decrease the uh, intracranial pressure, but they are given parenterally. Manitol and uh, furosemide are given parenterally. We are administering endotracheally, which which drug? Yes, lidocaine is administered endotracheally. So lidocaine is administered endotracheally. Then phenytoin regarding uh, phenytoin. Phenytoin doesn't reduce the intracranial pressure directly, but it is used to uh, reduce the seizures. It is an anti-epileptic drug. So that is just given to reduce the seizures which may increase the ICP. The seizures may, that means phenytoin is having an indirect effect only. It is not directly reducing the ICP. It is reducing the seizures. If seizures are there, there can be chance of increased ICP. So in order to reduce the seizures, only we are administering phenytoin. And then manitol and furosemide are administered to reduce the ICP but it is given parenterally. And lidocaine is a drug of choice which is given through uh, endotracheally before suctioning in order to reduce the ICP. Then now we have the fifth question. The nurse is assessing a 38 year old client diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Which of the following symptoms would the nurse expect to find? Options are vision changes, absent deep tendon reflexes, then tremors at rest and flaccid muscles. So here the correct answer is option A, vision changes. The nurse is assessing a 38 year old client diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So our condition here is multiple sclerosis. In this case what are the manifestations which we are expected uh, to find in the patient with multiple sclerosis. So mainly this uh, manifestations are vision changes. So it can be that include diplopia, then nystagmus, blurred vision, blurred vision. So these are all the different manifestations which is seen in multiple sclerosis. Then regarding the deep tendon reflex, this is mainly the deep tendon reflex in uh, multiple sclerosis it may be increased or the, the, it may be hyperactive. Okay, deep tendon reflexes are not absent but it is increased or it is hyperactive. Then uh, we can see in multiple sclerosis the Babinski sign may be positive. That is another important thing. Babinski sign, Babinski sign is positive in multiple sclerosis. Then so tremors at rest is not a characteristic of multiple sclerosis and also the affected muscles will be uh, spastic not flaccid muscles will be more spastic in multiple sclerosis it is not found as flaccid so spastic muscles are the features so among these options the correct answer is vision changes that uh, that is the answer and that include diplopia nystagmus and blurred vision so these are the important questions uh, related with the nervous system and this will be useful for all job aspirants who are preparing for the different competitive examinations so thank you.